Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is NVIDIA Grid on VMware Part 2, Get the Grid Software. So in the previous versions of this video, uh, we talked about um, what we're going to do with this Grid K2 card. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get the software for the, the K2 card to begin with. So if you go to the NVIDIA website and you click on the Drivers tab, we want to tell the Drivers tab that it's a Grid card, it's a Grid vGPU, and in our case, it's a K2 card. And then what you'll see from here is that the operating system I'm putting it on is vSphere 6.5. This is an older card, and this is the latest version of vSphere that it works on, but more modern cards are obviously supported all the way up to version 7. So I'll put in my details here to get the driver, and then I'll click on Search. And then in my case, when I filmed this, this was the current version of the driver, version 3.7.0.4.1 for vSphere 6.5. So we'll just double check that that's, um, that's right, and then we're going to click the download button. So after downloading this, we just need to make sure supported products, NVIDIA Grid K1, K2. So we've got definitely got the right driver here. And what happens is when I download the, when I download this, I'll get a zip file. And when I expand out the zip file, it contains the following files. Uh, so these are the different bits of software we'll use to install on the virtual machine itself. So this is uh, for the virtual machine and these for the server part of it. And these are the user guides. And you'll find that this one here, this vGPU user guide is very useful. And I'd, I would read that thoroughly first before you do this. It contains all of the things like system requirements and prerequisites and the order for doing things. It's really what we're going to cover in this video, but I would recommend that you read that first. So in that zip file, you'll find all these individual files. If you haven't already got a tool for unzipping these VIP files and offline bundles, so this VIP is a VMware installation binary and this is an offline bundle, which is a, a set of patches for a VMware host. Um, you, you can do it either way. I'm gonna focus on the VIP way of doing stuff this time. Um, but all of this is what comes in the, the zip file that we download. If you don't already have something for unzipping zip files, I would recommend 7-Zip. It's an open source product that can do zip files, uh, other kinds of archives and ISOs and other things. But yeah, if you haven't already got something, I'd recommend 7-Zip. Um, and what we're going to do with these files is we're going to copy them to a data store. Um, on an ESXi host. Now, if this looks unfamiliar to you, I do have a video, uh, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series called Host Client and Host Storage. This will walk you through any of this, but if you're familiar with it, we're basically gonna go to a data store browser. We're gonna pick a disk. We're gonna create um, a directory called updates to put, this, um, put, to put these files in. And then we're gonna click on upload and upload these files so we now have those files on a data store on a VMware host so that we can later install that software. So all we're really doing here is putting the VIB file, the VIB file VMware installation binary onto a data store that the host can see so that we can install it from the command line. So another option to the data store browser would be something like WinSCP, Secure Copy Protocol. Worth mentioning here that this uses SSH, so if you haven't already got SSH enabled on your host, you need to enable SSH. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a video called Host Client Host Manage as part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. Just have a look at that, and that will tell you how to enable SSH either temporarily or permanently. And once we've got SSH enabled on the host, we can use WinSCP to connect to the server. And what we'll need to do is provide a protocol. In our case, it's SCP, Secure Pro Copy Protocol, which works over SSH. We're then gonna give it a host name and a port number, which is 22. Usually by picking SCP, that will default to 22. And then we need the local username for the ESXi host, which will be root and the password you gave it at installation. Once we've put those details in, we can click on login and we will try and attach to the host in order to use um, SCP or secure copy protocol. If it's the first time you've connected to this host, it might query the SSH key or the fingerprint. Um, and what you just need to do is decide if you if you trust this or if it if it's likely that this is the correct server in a home lab environment the chances are that this is the only uh, machine on the network um, so in most cases you can accept this but just be aware the first time you connect to a server it will prompt you and ask you if you're going to trust the certificate 
So this is SCP, it's a dual window, uh, some of you may remember Norton Commander, similar kind of interface. And what we're going to do is, if we haven't already got one, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to create that updates folder. So if you haven't already done this, create that now. And then we're going to select these two files here. And then we're going to drag them from this window to that window so that they copy over. So we're just literally copying the files of our local machine onto this directory on the ESXi host. And we're going to we're going to need this information later when we go to install it. And the bits we're going to need is this bit at the top, the path, and here the name of the vib. So this part, the folder that it's in, or directory that it's in, and this part, the name of the binary file or vib, we're going to need both of those when we install the uh, binary next. So that was NVIDIA Grid on VMware Part 2, Getting the Grid Software. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found that useful.